Now, one assumption I think we're making is that mental experience of consciousness is susceptible to simulation. That's correct. Um, the argument, the simulation argument, um, assumes um, a weak form of, you might call it substrate independence. It's the idea that, uh, theoretically, in order to generate conscious experiences, you don't have to have wet, squishy uh, neurons based on carbon chemistry. You could, in principle, have some other implementation of the same computational structure. So your term was substrate independence. Yeah, so it doesn't I, matter where you put the, that kind of algorithm and, and uh, uh, computing activity, that's, that's either right. it's in a brain or a supercomputer, doesn't make any difference. That's right. I mean, basically, whether it's carbon or silicon will not make a difference. It's what kind of structure of computation, ultimately, that, that makes somebody conscious. Yeah, it, it, it should be noted, it's a fairly weak assumption. So it doesn't say that anything that passes the Turing test, like anything that behaves like a human, like a, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, is therefore conscious. It's a weaker assumption that um, as long as you replicate at the sufficient level of detail what goes on in your brain, say at the level of individual nerve cell or synapses, uh, then you would in fact have something that would have conscious experiences. That, that's so, so that's assumption. an assumption. That's an assumption. So the argument says nothing in support of that. Uh, it just imports that assumption. And, and it's a common thing in philosophy of mind. Sure, and but some people science. say that's impossible, yeah. that you can't have conscious experience. You can have a zombie experience. You can give the appearance of, yeah. of, of, uh, of consciousness without having real consciousness. But given, look, it's both sides, but assuming you can, then the argument follows very strongly. Yeah, and so, I mean, I, it, I, so I have nothing particular in support to say of this substrate independence. I mean, there is yeah, separate that, that's a number whole of arguments. Other yeah. argument, yeah. um, but so that's in the background. Another assumption that's in the background, but that I do give some arguments for, is this assumption that a technologically mature civilization could produce computers that are fast enough that yeah, they could do this, yes. etc. Um, and it's important to point out that in order to create one of these ancestor simulations, um, it wouldn't be necessary to simulate the universe down to the level of individual atoms or quarks mm. or capture the whole quantum dynamical <laughs> you know, uh, system. <laughs> that is, um, Because if you think about it, in order to create a simulation that would appear to you indistinguishable from the original, um, like this table that you see here, um, Right now, you have no idea of what the individual electrons are doing. Sure, it's, it's right. just the behavior. You just have to simulate the surface right, right, uh, right. and the weight of it. Right. Um, now, if you were to put, I don't know, an electron microscope, you, you bring in an electron microscope right. and you start looking. So that, then right. you could begin to see what happens at the microscopic level. Well, you can program the computer so can, that if somebody so does fills that, in, fills it in fills in. Details, in. Exactly. Yeah, right. um, and similarly, with outer space, so we only see little blobs of light. Until uh, you look. Yeah. And uh, so there is a lot of the universe that you wouldn't have to capture in detail in the simulation in order to make it appear. Well, I, I wouldn't even right. have to capture that you're conscious. Uh, so this I, is an I, important I, question. I, I can, it can just be me, and you're kind of irrelevant. Yeah. You're just part of my uh, fantasy. So this is an open question in the simulation argument, which is that... Um, so, so the original simulation argument says there could be these ancestor simulations where there would be a lot of humans simulated in a computer. Yeah. Now, you might consider the possibility of, uh, say, call it a me simulation. Just me. Yeah, just you, or just a few people, maybe. We call it Not solipsism. Yeah. <laughs> um, except that there would actually be other people in the world in that scenario. It's just not in the simulation. I mean, you would still have the simulators and other people out there, but, but all these people around here, the, the camera guy, the sound technician. The director. Yeah, especially the director. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, just, would just take. part of no, it. <laughs> but an interesting question is whether it would be technologically feasible to have somebody behave indistinguishable from a real human and yet have no conscious experiences. And I, I have no, I take no stand on that. I'm not sure. Yeah. Uh, it could be that for somebody <clears throat> to react really realistically, you would really have to have a conscious phenomena going with it. Yeah, but I think the point you made earlier really uh, eliminates all of that because th the computing power that such a civilization would have would enable you to do a full-blown case mm -hmm. that everybody could have real, real consciousness. You can simulate that w very easily with the computing power available, so it's almost irrelevant. Uh, well, that's right, but so, so you then have to consider the question of um, given that Suppose there are all these technologically mature civilizations and they run these simulations. Um, they might run many different kinds of simulations, you know. 
some civilizations might run some kind of simulation, some people run some sure. other. So um, the question then becomes, if that's the way the world looks, what kind of simulation would you most likely be in? Okay. In other words, <clears throat> what kind of simulation would most people like you live in? Um, so it might be possible to create a full-blown simulation that is completely realistic, but if you thought that most simulations would be of a different kind, they would be as cheap as possible, say, so mm. uh, simulations where nothing other than the essential bits are simulated, right. then you know you would have to think: Would you be more likely to live in such a simulation if if there are many more of them? Well, it's hard. It's uh, hard to project for the the psychology of the simulation. Yeah, it's impossible. So, uh, uh, and uh, so people then ask me, well. Suppose this argument is true, so there are these three possibilities, so which one is it? Yeah, it's just what I was going to ask you. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and so the argument is quiet about that. It doesn't try to pick out. Now, you might have independent reason, or you might think you have some other reason to pick one or the other of these three. Um, and most people, after having explained the argument, do think so. Yeah, I mean, one of these three is, is true, that's, that's correct, but of course it's number <laughs> yeah. you know, and everybody picks a different one. Everybody picks a different one. Uh, right. So I would eliminate two uh -huh. as the as the one I would eliminate first, right. because I can't imagine a civilization not who who is able to develop technology getting beyond the point of curiosity or fun or something like that. And, and, and it's not everybody. You, I mean, you have you have to get everybody oh, because in, yeah. in a civilization, you know, if, if just a few outsiders want to do this. Yeah. You know they may they may be able to, and I, I see the force of that argument. I mean, I'm, I'm partially agreeing with you, but you could also say that, you know, what are the reasons why we would want to do this, or why we do similar things? Why do we produce plays in the theater, or movies, and read books, and right. these kind of the, or run little uh, role playing games and stuff? Oh, well, we do it for fun, maybe. Um, in some cases, maybe. We do it for a sort of scientific research purpose. We create models to try to understand what happened. Artistic, you know, sure, production. Sure. Uh, so one could question whether these things will apply to the simulators, the potential simulators. So we assume that any civilization uh, which has the technology to create ancestor simulations, which would be extremely difficult. I mean, it's not yeah, a little, right, you know, right. would also have the technology to have transformed themselves, to make themselves post-human beings with super intelligence and all of that. Um, and so the question is whether these transformed post-humans would still have need those... to do these, these same drives like us. I mean, if, 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 for example, they want fun, pleasure, maybe they have more efficient ways of getting that rather than <laughs> to create big planetary sized computers running simulations right. of the past, maybe they just stimulate their pleasure. So centers. which one are you going to put your money on? Well, I was going to suggest that um, we uh, put a little bit of probability on each one of them. Oh, you're cheating. Yeah, <laughs> but I think that's the rational thing to do if we lack sufficient reason to pick one. You're too issue. rational. So we, 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 if, if, if you, all right, I'll give you one, one, one pile of money, you can put a third on each one. But if I said to you, I'm only going to let you bet on one, All right. and you got to put 100% on one. All right. Then I would pick the second, actually. Okay. But I'm just slightly more. Okay. Fair enough. Than that. Fair not, enough. Not by huge one. Okay. Fair enough. <laughs>